Welcome to the Modern Day Mom Meets Modern Day Dad Chat. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Now, Alexander, you what's your profession? What's your profession? Okay, okay. Um, I'm a resident oncology nurse specialist. Wow. But um, I'm a general nurse who can still um, work on patients any day, any time. I mean, all the time. Yeah. Right. Just, so during the pandemic, want... have you been um, working with COVID patients? Um, some of our patients do have COVID. Just that my kind of patients cannot survive COVID for a long time. Just uh, last week, yeah, we had one who passed through our unit blindly. Um, but um, I think she's doing better now. Oh, we thank but God. With my kind of patients, with my kind of patients, they can't survive COVID. So we try to prevent um, them from getting it. Yes, that's the main goal for now. Okay. Now you are also a dad of one. Yes, please. <laughs> um, how old yes. is your son? Please come again. How old is your son? Oh, 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 he is um seven months old, yeah. Wow, so you're a fresh dad. How how has fatherhood been so far in, in the seven months? It has been amazing. It has been amazing. You know, my boy brought a whole different vibe. And then uh, he changed everything about uh, my personality because I've been with boys. I should say, uh, when he came, the transition actually happened. Okay. The transition from a boy to a man actually happened because I was that type, you know, I would spend time with my boys' boys and other things. But when he came, I feel like, no, I owe this young man a whole lot. And right. then um, I need to do things in a way that when he grows up, he will come to appreciate whatever the dad, um, as, a, as a father as I am, I have done so far. So he brought a whole new vibe and I appreciate it, yeah. Now, when you found out you were going to be a dad, what were you most worried about? What scared you? <laughs> I, I don't say, but I'm not, I'm, I've not been scared in regards to being the father because um, well, I'm somehow old. I'm in my 30s. Okay. I've been working all the time. And then personally, I have cared for a lot of pregnant women before. Because before I school, for instance, I was the, in charge of a recovery unit whereby patients after C sections were brought to my end. Right. So I've kept a set of people and then I, it was a different feeling altogether. Even though I met some challenges, I felt from the in laws and other things, I felt um, they are expected. And so I handled them in the right way, in the right manner. Right. So um, the challenges I didn't meet mad. All I was praying for was that um, uh, doing the scans and other things, no abnormality would be detected in those things. Right. I was conscious of those things, yeah. Now, what were you most excited about, especially when you found out you were having a boy? Because, you know, my, my last guest, he was excited that he was having a boy just to be able to have this little bestie. Um, so, what were you excited about when you found out you were going to be a dad and you were having a son? Yes, the excitement actually started from day one when the, the lady broke the news to me, or my mom broke the news to me that she's going to have a baby. Right. But I was talking on the scan, the ultrasound scans. Uh, at a point in time, some of them could be deceptive. So, I relied on one of my doctor friends to do um, a better scan, let me quote, a better scan. Okay. So that there will be nothing like a mistake. And after that, um, he told me that uh, the baby in utero is going to be a boy. And I was like, wow, I, I have a new partner because I don't know, I have a lot in mind for my son. Right. <laughs> I have a lot in mind for him, yeah. So the excitement actually started from day one. Okay. And you know, actually, some of them actually prefer to have uh, daughters instead of the boys, but then I, I I also felt I need a boy. I need someone who can just take uh, who will take after me. Right. Everything that I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So speaking of taking everything that you are, what is the one trait, that one personality trait that you have that you hope that your son also has? 
Um, my mental toughness. Okay. Or should I modify it? Let me call it my emotional intelligence. Okay. Because it's a whole lot. And now I believe when he takes that thing after me, it's going to help him a lot. Okay. Yes. That is the one key thing that has brought me so far. Okay. Yes, my, that's my personal life, everything, yeah. Now, um, what would you tell your younger self, who you were like 10 years ago, about fatherhood? Oh, um, I would have told uh, myself that, okay, um, it's inevitable, but I feel like um, it's something that every man should embrace at a point in time. It's inevitable, and it's like paying your dues back to you. It's like, I don't know how to put it, but then um, handling things like the way your dad handled you, because I have I had opportunity to stay with my dad all my life, okay. and I took something for him. So I was like, one day I'm also going to um, become that kind of home model, so okay. that my son was, or a nephew would take that thing or after me, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And um, you spoke about how you've kind of changed, but how would you say you've grown as a man, even though it's just been seven months of, of, of being a dad? I know you said like now, you know, the boys, boys, maybe that's a bit less, <laughs> but what else, how else have you changed as a man in the past seven months? Yes, for now, whenever I'm not with him here, because uh, but when I wake up, the first thing is to check up on him. How is he doing? Is he breastfeeding at all? And then after the other foods were introduced, I've been asking the mom, has he been taking the food? Should we buy this? Should we buy that? Right. I always ask, um, how is he coping with the type of diapers that he's using right now? I mean, everything concerning my finances, my social life, I, I've become that calm type that I always spend, at least if I don't go out, I spend all the time in those. Right. Trying to play with him when I was with him, yes. Okay. Now, so um, actually, it has helped me in a much. Uh huh. Go ahead. It's helped you. Yes, it has helped me that for now, um, as I said, he brought a new vibe, and then he has actually made me that kind of man that everybody or people around me expected. Okay. Because I don't spend on sorry to say unnecessary stuff. Right. I need to say my boy at a point in time will not lack. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, when it comes to men and fatherhood, do you feel like men are open? Like this discussion we're having, do you feel like it needs to happen more and more men need to be vocal about, you know, the changes they are going through as men, emotionally, mentally? Because they, you guys also have your own <sighs> world that you're, you're dealing with. Um. I believe the men also need uh, people to talk to. They need this kind of thing all the time because we we always center our um, attention around um, the market. But I, I think it's necessary. And brought it's. I think I don't know whether you can actually do it for half of the Ghanaian men or something because we all need it to share our experience. And based on that, we will learn from each other as well. Because I don't the day. I think uh, we're all doing this for the interest of the uh, children that uh, we've brought to this uh, mother earth. So in my own way, I think we all need people like you to be talking to men or fathers so that um, where they are actually falling short, they work on it right. and then they can also learn from other people. Yeah. Now, when you are feeling down and out and stressed, who do you go to? Who do you speak to? Do you open up or do you keep it to yourself? Um, I'm that type that I used to have a lot of female friends. Mm -hmm. I have friends, I connect boys who are right, but um, this, my profession has given me the opportunity to have a lot of female friends. So I have some trusted female friends, and some are actually older than me, some are also younger than me. I share one or two with them, and based on that, I act and I don't do day. I move on. At times, I listen to music all the time. Music, <laughs> music, I mean, teaches me a lot of things. So, okay. some of the words 
Yes, especially highlight. I, I always listen to music and I pick one or two from every 10 music that I've been listening to. Yeah. Okay. Alexander, thank you so much. <laughs> um, continue being an amazing dad. Um, they grow too fast because it, it felt like just yesterday Aaron was seven months and now he's going to be three. And so, you know, embrace every single moment of fatherhood. Um, because so far from, from just our short chat, you're doing amazing and you definitely are raising your son to be an incredible man one day. So sure. continue. And thank you so much for your service to the country um, as a nurse. Um, we truly appreciate that. Um, a male nurse. <laughs> we, we truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm a performer, yes. Yeah. Just that very soon, uh, my position will change, and uh, I will just care for patients with uh, cancers. Oh. You know, they are the type of feel. So my new field is about cancers. So I see a lot of them every day. They okay. come for the chemo, they come for the radiation. Some also come for reviews, normal reviews and others. So um, it's a field that people don't want to venture into, but I feel this is the time to give that side of medicine the attention that it needs. Because a lot of people are still really shy to talk about um, the breast cancers, the cervical, the ovarian ones. The men also have the prostate. Yeah. Some do come with the liver. And we have the head and neck uh, tumors. Some do come with the leukemias and other things, but they don't have the support system. I mean, people to create awareness that there is this condition. And it's not uh, what people call the abort in a can. So when they come to the hospital on time, treatment and other things will at least help. Even right. if it's advanced, palliative management to also and, and uh, prolong their yeah, lifespan or something like that. So I like what I'm doing now, and um, I, I need to talk more and talk more about cancers because every day we, we get new cases referred right. from the other places of um, or other facilities yeah yeah wow everything after school and everything i also go back to my mother facility or my first hospital i'll set up my clinic over there inside oh. the hospital and i will try as much as i can to detect the cases on time because mm -hmm. early detection actually leads to remission or total recovery yes. cancers are cured they are curable oh, wow. but um People think, as I said, people think it's some kind of, um, it's like a case or something. Right. But a lot of people do come around who are just free of cancer. So it's something else. And we have a lot of people coming in, uh, coming in to support patients. Right. So um, I think uh, we, I always try to tell people in my own way that um, cancer is real. It's not a death sentence. Right. Depends on the, the stage and other things. So, we are doing our best. Again, thank you so much for all you do. Um, we appreciate you a million. And Ghana, Ghana, Ghana owes me a lot because you, you are doing your best. The mothers in Kolebu, the mothers in Achukta, the mothers in Achimata Hospital. You know a lot. You are doing a lot. Thank you. And this time, we want to mention your name to the masses. Thanks. Because you are doing your best. As an individual, you are doing your best. Um, those that have come across um, Sincerely the Foundation and other things, they owe you a lot. And I think Ghana as a whole, they owe you a lot. Oh. You're doing, you doing well. You're oh. doing well. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so it's not easy because you, you, you are trying to do your resources, you, right. all your resources, to help people. Yes. You, you are doing well. I mean, you're doing well because some people do have the time, they do have the resources, but yet, they are selfish. So, our Ghanaians are grateful to your foundation and you because you are doing everything perfectly. And um, it's good that you're also talking to men like me, a young, okay, me too, and my, and a new dad like me. Yes. Yes, we are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you. I hope my son goes up. I'll talk to my son about you when he grows up. <laughs> what did you say? I'll talk to my son about you when it goes up. Thank you. I'm hoping we can get a lot more support because um, it's, it's not easy. Like it's been, it has been 
difficult holding these events. Somehow, some way I make it happen. Um, but we definitely need more support. Even during the COVID period, I've still been discharging patients. I've still been um, paying for, you know, food for newborns, uh, theater bills. And people think that, it, you know, it's just luxury money. But sometimes when I get the messages, I'm like, oh gosh, how am I going to make this happen? I also say, if it wasn't for Malcolm, Malcolm supported us in March for International Women's Day. Without them, I don't know how we would have been able to be helping out during this COVID period. So okay. we keep our fingers crossed. I just hope and pray that you extend your activities to um, the Ashanti region. I know a lot of people will be ready to support. I yeah. know the kind of people they are. Uh, my people are short okay, I'm, I'm Ashanti, I'm a pro woman, but I, I like the way that Ashanti do their things at times, yeah. yeah. No, definitely, the plan is, you know, I really wanted it to get on the ground here and then start sure. to keep out of Accra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is definitely in, in the pipeline. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. God bless you for everything. Let me, let me so well. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. And please keep safe. Keep safe, keep safe, keep safe. And um, we'll definitely have another chat again. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.